So I just realized that today marks the 20th anniversary of the Crash Bandicoot series and um, I had this day planned in my head. I like I was like, oh, when that day hits, I'm gonna have to do something really special for Crash because Crash is one of my favorite games of all time, and it is one of the reasons I am a gamer today, and it's really shaped me as the gamer I am today. And uh, I'm really annoyed that um, I forgot all about it. And uh, I just like, oh my god, it's the fucking day, and I can't do anything now. It's just too late. It's t preparation. I wanted it to be good, and anything I do now, I I'll just rush it, and um, it will just be. It won't be up to the standards that Crash deserves. Uh, that's a real shame. So instead the compromise for this, I'm just going to really run down my memories um, with Crash Bandicoot because as I said it's very important to me, it's a very important part of my life and uh, yeah I think I'll just just uh, get into it, get, um, get some thoughts uh, up and uh, just to commemorate Crash's 20th anniversary because as I said they are very important games to me. So this is going to be completely unstructured, just because I'm going to be talking off the top of my head about one of my favourite games of all time, one of my favourite game franchises of all time, and the game franchise that got Naughty Dog on the map. Crash is one of my earliest gaming memories. Uh, I do have earlier gaming memories, but this is the first game I remember like playing religiously and playing over and over and over again. I, I don't remember much from a child, I don't know why, it's just I have a terrible memory. I always have had a like horrible memory. So my mother had a PS1 in her bedroom. With a, a nice little, like, I think it was about a uh, 20 inch TV on her locker. And uh, I just remember sitting there at the end of that bed, pitch black, no lights, but the light on that CRT TV, and the noises and sounds and images of Crash spinning up and down and jumping over, jumping over shit and just images of Crash burned in my mind uh, right then and there when I was like about three years old, I'd say. Uh, because I don't know if I can remember it. I don't remember the exact age. Leave me alone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just uh, just remember sitting there and, and playing these games, not having a clue what I was doing, dying and dying over and over again, and me and my mother taking turns. My mother, who wasn't that good at the game either, but also loved it. And uh, it's just just thinking back to those days and uh, like just how much those actually mean to me now and how much that influenced me to keep playing games as I got older and keep on having an obsession with games but uh, I just remember um, the first Crash game being really scary to me being uh, I was it was just uh, something about it something about the design of the game it, it felt like eerie especially in the last island the later levels Crash uh, Cortex's factories and all and uh, and um, the later levels, that they get much darker and much um, much scarier. Especially that uh, one image that uh, stands out in my mind is that image in uh, I can't remember the level name off the top of my head, but the level with the you know the music and Cortex's face just on the screen and uh, the eerie music and the darkness of it. And I just still to that day that gives me chilling feelings. And like nearly every level in the Last Island gives me chilling feelings. Slippery climb, um, the, the factory again. I I can't remember the level names for the life of me. I'm sorry. Um, I've seen a while since I played Crash 1. Um, well, it's just all the later levels. Uh, the boss's pinstripe uh, engine is 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 just amazing. Not engine, sorry, sorry, not engine. Uh, Nitrous Brio. The engine didn't come in until the second game. Um, yeah, Nitrous Brio and just his squeal, his squeals when you hit him. And like, the sound effects in the game alone I found quite scary. Uh, well, not scary, just very eerie, very something about him that, like, still to this day gives me some sort of weird feeling, like, some sort of, I don't know if it's fear, or if it's just an uneasy feeling, but it's a nice uneasy feeling. And, uh, it's always been burnt in the back of my mind, those levels, and, um, yeah, I never forgot them. Uh, it's just, I love those games to death. Uh, and then Crash 2. Uh, I don't remember when we got Crash 2, I don't know if we got it released or not, I highly doubt it. But, um... Yeah, I remember playing Crash 2 like, much more than Crash 1. I think Crash 2 is actually um, one I remember first beforehand. Again, my memory is scrambled, so don't I don't know how accurate uh, much of these dates or much of the order this is. But Crash 2, especially, yeah, Crash 2 was the same scenario. Uh, I think we had it actually. No, I think I think we had it at the same time as Crash 1, and then Crash 1 was given to someone as a loan, uh, and then we just had Crash 2, and then I got Crash 1 back later. I think that's how it went. Um, but yeah, Crash 2 I remember playing, I remember, Crash 2 is my favourite game, um, my favourite game in the Crash series, and 
just so many, so much nostalgic memories. I remember having friends and cousins over, and just playing the game and just like it's some of the happiest times of my life, really. Uh, one thing in particular I remember with Crash Two is uh, I went over to a, a friend's house and this, well, my mother's friend's house. I don't know if I really knew the people that well, but um, it was like a family went over to that family, and uh, this this woman who was my mother's friend, I guess, had like five hundred children or whatever, and uh, I think it was like seven, and they had this like, they all had one of these. Like, tiny little portable TVs, you know what I'm talking about? They're like tiny little three inch portable TVs. And I remember uh, bringing my PS1 over because my mother was like, oh, well, you should be in your PS1 over. I don't know if they'd have games and I think you should, could, you'd like playing them. And I was like, oh, okay, that sounds stupid, but okay. So yeah, and I remember hooking the PS1 off this tiny little three inch TV that was in black and white as well. I don't know how old this fucking thing was, but it was like, it was ancient and it was portable and it was horrible. But it was a black and white, about three inch TV. And I remember plugging it in with Crash 2 in it. And uh, playing Crash 2 in that tiny thing, I was like, what the fuck? I mean, and it really like made me appreciate the gameplay of Crash 2. Because the graphics like made it look like, like you could barely see the game. You could pretty much barely see the game. You could just make out objects and colours. Well, not even colours because it's black and white, but you could just make up out, um... Make out where you were going about. And uh, it made me respect the gameplay. That was really the first time I remember thinking like, oh my god, this like, actually plays really well. Because I'm able to play this game barely being able to see anything and being able to play it from memory and everything is responsive on this piece of shit TV. But yeah, it's just a funny story I want to show out there uh, um, with Crash 2 and also I have a lot of different scenarios in playing Crash 2. I've played Crash 2 in a lot of different places. I also um, went over to my cousin's house and uh, played Crash 2 and uh, just, yeah, it's actually my first experience with a PS1 Slim. My cousin had a PS1 Slim which I'd never seen before. I just had a normal original PS1 and uh, I was like, I went in to put the game in, I was like, where's the PS1? I didn't know where the PS1 was. And she showed me it, and I was like, what the hell is that? She's like, that's the PS1. And I'm like, no it's not, it looks different. And then, then she's like, shut up and put the game in and play it, and then I enjoyed it. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I'd say these things, it's just, I find this stuff interesting. I don't think anyone else will, but I do, and that's just one thing I wanted to throw, one little memory I wanted to put in. And uh, yeah, again, uh, that's what mobbed me. Like after I played Crash 2, like so many times, and never getting very far because we didn't have a memory card, so we had to restart the game over and over again. Like whenever we, we turned off the PlayStation. Uh, but I loved every second of it, and uh, that's when I realized that I love these things that I'm doing. I love playing these video game things, and I love um, just playing these games. There's something about it that. I didn't get any feeling from this from watching movies or doing anything else or playing sports or whatever. This, uh, this I did get that feeling with. This is like, oh my god, this is something I, I, I actually love this. This is something I, I really enjoy doing. And uh, as I said, I didn't get this for any other entertainment medium or any doing any other thing like playing sports or whatever. Like I just said. And yeah, and that was pretty much where it clicked with me, like, hey, I love these video game things, and I want to play them forever and ever, ever and ever, until I die and stuff. And then I played, more, started playing more and more games, I started playing Spyro, I started, um, uh, actually a friend down the road who we loaned the Mega Drive to, which was the original console I played. Uh, I got that back and I played the shit out of the Mega Drive, I uh, played games like... Did I play in a Mega Drive? Actually, no. Sorry, it's an NES and a Mega Drive as both. And uh, NES is what I first played, and I play. I started playing Mario and um, Mario One, I think it was, and Paperboy, <laughs> and then a Mega Drive where we, uh, we had like uh, what was it? Uh, the Aladdin game on Mega Drive. Uh, that, we're getting off topic here, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. Uh, but yeah, Crash really, um, really started all that, and. Uh, yeah, so I played Crash 1 and Crash 2 religiously, like pretty much every day. Uh, every time, every day I came home from school, that's the first thing I'd do. Uh, just turn on the TV, play Crash, turn on the TV, play Crash, turn on the TV, play Crash. That's all I really wanted to do. Uh, probably wasn't the healthiest thing, but uh, it's what I liked, it's what I enjoyed mostly. Uh, and then uh, Crash 3 we got later on, I remember. But one thing I remember about Crash 3 mostly is playing it in like a very vast array of places. I know I mentioned I played Crash 2 in a lot of places, but Crash 3 was even crazier. I played Crash 3 at home, of course. I played Crash 3 in Friends. I played Crash 3 in Enemies. <laughs> um, I played Crash 3 in um, in Cousins. I played Crash 3 in, in 
Hospitals, I played Crash. I played Crash 3 everywhere, and that game was like. I think out of all the Crash games, I've played Crash 3 the most, and I think that's why I don't. Um, not that I don't like it, it's that it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it's because I think I've played it too much that I don't like it as much as the other, as the other two. Um, I, I probably just played it today and burnt myself out on it, which is not smart to do with games. Um, I know a lot of people that play their favorite games over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again, non-stop, and I'm like, I can't do that. I get burnt out in the game, especially nowadays. Now that I'm such a nitpicky bastard with games, and uh, which I wish I wasn't, but I am. Uh, but yeah, Crash 3 is like a vast array of places I can just think off the top of my mind playing that game in. And I enjoyed every one of them. Every time, even if I was in a place I didn't like and I put on Crash 3 and played it, it just made that place I didn't like uh, seem like a better place. And yeah, it made life more enjoyable. As crazy as that is, I remember like despising the swimming levels, but that didn't matter because the game was just fantastic, like the other two. And as a kid, you don't really, you don't analyze games. You just play games and play them and enjoy them, which I wish I could do today. I wish I was still that little kid that just played a game and enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, but unfortunately, we have to overanalyze things as we get over and overanalyze every single little fucking tiny thing, and it's really annoying. I can't turn that part of my brain off, and I'm trying to teach myself to do that. But uh, yeah, thinking of Crash just brings me back to simpler times when I just play games and enjoy them, no matter how good or how bad they were. But to continue, Crash was a good game and it was a great game to get me started. Maybe if I did play a bad game, like I wouldn't know it was a bad game, but like I wouldn't have clicked with gaming as much. And that's why Crash is so important. Um, I never had CTR, I never had Crash Team Racing. I remember playing it, but I never had it. As a motorbike explodes in my garden, apparently, and my dog goes crazy. But yeah, I never remember uh, having Crash Team Racing. I remember playing it once or twice, but as far as owning it and playing it as much as the other three, uh, no, I didn't. One thing about Crash that I've always loved and adored is the music. The music, uh, still to this day, uh, just like the graphics, but the music especially, if I just hear t a, t a tune from uh, from Crash, uh, it just brings me back to that time, uh, just sitting on the end of that bed playing that game. And that's pretty much it. Um, again, uh, I know I'm forgetting a million more stories, and I know there's a lot of other things I'm forgetting to say that I can't think off the top of my head right now, and this is probably a boring video, but uh, I just wanted to do something. I mean, I couldn't have just not come up and talked about Crash's 20th anniversary because it's such an important game, as I said, for the last 12 minutes. And uh, I would have I would have regretted if I didn't do that for Crash. So, uh, yeah, consider this my Crash 20th anniversary special or whatever. Um, hopefully, uh, for Jack, if I remember Jack's anniversary, which I should, I should. I am working on something already for it, so this doesn't happen again. But for Jack, I'm going to have something much more grander, something much more... Um, much better for Jack's 15th anniversary coming up soon. Uh, coming up this year, actually, late in November, in later this year, November, isn't it? I think uh, I'll have to double check it. But uh, yeah, I've some big plan for that, so stay tuned for that. But for Crash, um, I just want to end this with a thank you to Naughty Dog for uh, making these uh, these games and getting me into gaming and making me what I am today, molding me into a person I am today, yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, part of the person I am today. And that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. I know it was probably a bit boring and hard to listen to. And I'm sorry about the random mic changes. It's just uh, I had to keep stopping and starting recording because I had to think of what I wanted to say, which you probably couldn't be able to tell because I still just spewed out all my shit. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And uh, happy anniversary, Crash. And uh, here's slow look up to the future. Crash is still alive and well. It's just been revived, hopefully, with these remasters coming out. Um, Hopefully this is a stepping stone to a new Crash game and hopefully we can have Crash back to like he was in his glory days and make Crash a prominent figure again. And uh, hopefully these times are ahead of us and hopefully it's sooner than we think. So again, thank you very much for watching these videos and uh, I will be doing some more Crash related content, especially with the re-releases coming out and all. So stay tuned if you like Crash and uh, yeah, I bid you all farewell.